Hello everyone, welcome back to another daily Marvel Snap video. So today I have a new deck list that you may have seen on the ladder a little bit, you may have seen if you are in the Marvel Snap Discord, and it's a deck list that they are calling Negative Serotonin. The idea behind this deck list is consistency. It wants to be able to push high power no matter what order or what cards you draw into. And so this deck list, as far as I know, was created by a user named Dunkoro, who was also responsible for making Death Wave efficient. And so this wasn't all from my mind, most of this deck list was from him. I did tech out one card for a very specific purpose, and that was Invisible Woman. Invisible Woman I replaced for a Jubilee from the original deck list, because Jubilee could pull into your Mystique, your Rogue, and it just felt bad whenever those encounters or those chances happened. And so with Invisible Woman, what you can do is you can drop her, you can then drop Mystique behind Invisible Woman, and Mystique is going to copy whatever ongoing card you play for the very last turn of the game. So if the last card that you drop is Iron Man, even though you dropped Mystique on three and you dropped Iron Man on six, Mystique is going to copy your Iron Man's ability. And this can create some really surprising swings and some really surprising plays. And so running through the entire deck list really quickly, we have Angela. So any kind of zoo style deck, Angela is going to be a great fit for. She is going to be able to be dropped as one of your first or second cards. And then you can follow up with cards behind her, which will all buff her up. We have Invisible Woman, which again, even if you don't get the Mystique encounter, it creates some uncertainty with your opponent. They don't know exactly what cards or what resources you hid behind Invisible Woman. And so it can create a lot of uncertainty and misplays from the opponent's side. We have Mojo. Mojo is one of the two primary targets for Mystique in this deck list. If you don't draw into or play your Iron Man, Mojo is going to be a second best bet. Mojo's ongoing ability, if you are up against a zoo style counter or you play him late, it's going to give you a two cost eight power card. Or if you play him early, you can discourage your opponent from playing resources there because they're not going to want to cap out that location and give you that additional six power. We have Mystique. Mystique is going to gain the ongoing ability of the last ongoing card that you played. So ideally that's going to be our Mojo or our Iron Man. Punisher is an okay target. Sarah a lot less or so, but can be a target as well. And then a potential high roll is if Rogue steals an ability and then you play Mystique right after, Mystique will copy whatever ability Rogue stole. And so another potential target or high roll from your Mystique play there. And then speaking of Rogue, Rogue is going to on reveal steal an ongoing ability from a random enemy card at that location. With how good Mr. Negative is right now and with how good ongoing abilities are, just having Rogue steal a Devil Dino's ongoing ability can be the difference between winning and losing a game because it can create a lane swing that the opponent is not going to anticipate. If they are relying on at least eight power from their Devil Dino and all of a sudden it's zero, that's really Really hard to calculate and overcome for the opponent. We have Wolfsbane. Wolfsbane is just a pretty decent three drop card for a zoo style deck. As long as you drop her into the lane at the very end, she's going to become a three cost seven power card. If she's inverse, it's even better. At one cost, nine power. We have Bishop. Again, with a zoo style deck, Bishop is going to typically get pretty large. Usually you can get Bishop anywhere between eight and 10 power with this deck list and with this zoo style. So you're not always holding and having him as your very first drop, but there are some games if you have both him and Sarah in your hand that you may hold some of your resources so that you can flood the board on turn six or turn seven. We have the Punisher. The Punisher is going to have the ongoing ability plus one power for each opposing card at this location. So overall, he is just an okay card. Um, his ongoing ability is very middle of the line, but he can create just enough power swing that you might be able to turn a location and then it gives you another target for your Mystique in like a worst case scenario type situation. Then we have Mr. Negative, who is going to be more of the high roll style card of this deck list, but even with the high roll, it's not an absolute like your other Mr. Negative, Jane Foster type decks. Mr. Negative is going to help increase the power output, but at the same time, if you don't draw him, it's not like you're not able to be competitive without him. We have Iron Man, who is just a fairly strong ongoing card. If you inverse him, it's even stronger. We have magic. Sometimes we are going to need to extend the game to get an additional Mr. Negative draw. Sometimes we are going to need to change a negative location in our favor. Magic allows us a lot of flexibility in this deck list to change unfavorable lanes or just get an additional turn to push out even more power. And then lastly, closing out the deck list, we have Sarah. Sarah is going to reduce the cost of cards in our hand by one. If we drop this on five, we can then drop magic and then an additional unit or two on six. And then for turn seven, we can just flood the board outright 
Dynamite to really cap out pretty much all of our locations and pretty consistently have four cards in each location to push as much power across the board as possible. And so that is the rundown. That is the general idea of the deck list. We are going to go ahead and jump in and test it out for a few games. All right, so first up, we're going against Teddy Bear 87. I do stand corrected in the deck explanation. I said Invisible Woman was really mainly in here for Mystique, but she has an additional good use as well. Um, something that I initially overlooked. We will be able to drop Invisible Woman. We can hide Rogue behind that card. That way we can drop Rogue on three or four and still potentially hit a really powerful ongoing ability from the opponent's lane, especially if they're running like a mirror match. That flipping after everything else reveals and concludes could be the game winner. It could be the difference between winning and losing that match. So the funny thing with Mirror Dimension here, if it copies into Mindscape, that is going to end up double switching. So we'll get a brief glimpse at what the opponent oh i love this uh so we get a brief like really brief glimpse at what the opponent has in their hand on turn six we'll have to be paying close attention if we do and we get a good enough read we can kind of adjust where we play accordingly so we are going to play our mr negative on four it's not a huge benefit to us but if we draw into let's say an inverted mystique we could drop our invisible woman as well as the mystique and then we can aim to have the last card that we play be iron man that way mystique will copy that the rest of the lane will be normal we have sarah here which i think is going to be our best bet we are going to flip cards they're going to see a little bit a, a brief glimpse of what we have um, but they're not going to know for sure and actually we can play sarah in the angela lane because she doesn't need the owner of ability uh, which cosmo is countering here so we're going to go ahead and drop sarah we will look to see Ooh, they send us a hobgoblin which is, feels really bad um because we don't have a way to send it back or destroy it or anything uh anything like that so okay let's pay close attention oh no they get the they get the first glimpse all right we ready okay, professor x okay Hazmat, okay. Destroyer, they have in hand. Nova, they have in hand. So they have Professor X, Destroyer, Nova, and Hazmat. Interesting. Okay. Um, and so I anticipate that they drop. Do they drop a Destroyer this turn? I I don't. They drop. They drop a Destroyer in Nova Roma, don't they? That would be the play. That would absolutely be the play, right? We can do our Invisible Woman. We can drop Mystique behind it. We can. Change this location with our magic, which is going to lock in our loss here, but we will have an additional turn to try to come up over their 16 power, which I think we can do in this lane. We can drop something like um, our Iron Man and then maybe something else that we draw into next turn. If not, then we do Rogue. It's not going to steal an ability, but it will be able to be impacted by our Iron Man. So let's go ahead and I almost want to lock in here, but they know we have the magic to extend the game. And actually with this, they can lock down this location. It won't be a big deal. Let's go ahead and snap on them. I think we have a decent shot here because if they do drop Professor X this turn, we have five power here. We have them beat by over the three power Professor X play here. Um, so let's go ahead and lock this in. And then Mystique, uh, uh, of course, as a reminder, is behind our Invisible Woman. So even though we haven't dropped anything for her to copy yet, as long as the last card we drop is Iron Man, she's going to copy Iron Man's ability She's going to sneak a second Iron Man into the lane to give us some decent upside. And so now we have to decide where they're going to be playing their power. So we can do we can do a rogue. Do we think they're going to cap out this location? Uh, because our Mojo and then our Iron Man could give us a decent push. And then we could cap this one out with Wolfsbane if we think they're going to cap out this location. If not, then, I mean, maybe they drop the Nova, but that doesn't seem great. Um, so we drop Mojo, we drop this. It's going to give us four, five, six added onto our eight so it's gonna be a 28 power lane i think we're okay with mojo here if they cap it out we get an even further upside and then our little engine that could back here of mystique is going to duplicate our invisible woman and our two four our five power wolfsbane here uh, to give us a 10 power lane in this one as well which actually thinking about that 10 power doesn't feel like it might not be enough the 10 power lane do we need to move mojo over it's too late now but we're gonna lock in they, we may need the additional mojo power here and just do iron man oh so they do a warpath okay and then they do oh interesting okay uh, so Mojo is going to be fine in Nova Roma. Even if we didn't have Mojo, that would have been... Okay, no, that's oh, yeah. we're, we're blowing Nova Roma out of the water here. Um, like absolutely smashing it. And then Mindscape is going to be fine. Actually, I forgot Mystique was inverted. So she gets the three power as well. Oh, yeah. Just everything kind of come into the focus here. Um, so a 20 power and a 40 power lane. 
the Iron Man mystique is so sneaky that even if they had dropped their resources here, they dropped Warpath, Nova, Bucky Barnes, they wouldn't have been able to come up over it. So a huge push for that first game. Great utilization of the Invisible Woman mystique combo right out of the gate. So let's see if we can keep that going. All right, so next up we have Melendar. And we are going to pass for the first turn. We're okay even if we have to pass turn two because it'll give us a chance to drop our bishop first. The squirrels honestly aren't great, <laughs> um, but that's okay. We can drop our invisible woman if we are certain that what we want to play behind her, of the lane we want to drop our cards behind actually. Now we're going to hold it one turn just to get a better advantage on reading where they want to drop their cards um, or where they may push a high amount of power. Ooh, and so negative zone here is kind of rough. We can drop our bishop in Atlantis, which right now will give us a disadvantage, but I think in the long run it'll be fine. I think we're going to stay away from negative zone for right now. So they have an apocalypse, so that tells me they're running a discard style deck. So we need to keep an eye on how big their apocalypse gets. Ooh, and we get the upside of a Mr. Negative here. So do we go ahead and stack Mr. Negative with our bishop so that we have the option of where we want to stack our invisible woman? I think we are going to do that. Um, and then that gives us a chance to have the inverted mystique again, which is huge. Uh, it's almost as big as having the inverted Iron Man because you can sneak it in a lane pretty easily. Um, and then our other inverse cards are going to be decent as well. <laughs> Speak. Speaking of inverted mystique, let's go ahead and go with the invisible woman and the mystique play here. I think that that will give us enough of a push to win this lane based off of whatever we end up dropping later. And we could always go with, so if we did a Sarah here, next turn we could go with a one power, zero, four power, but then that limits us to specifically that. We don't have any flexibility in that play line. So instead, I think we're going to go with the, do we go with a Punisher here? Or do we go with a Punisher here? Um, just so that we can have something to get us up back above that zero power mark. And it gives us flexibility on where we play f uh, the following turns. So I'm going to do that. I think Iron Man is going to be a better, actually, no, let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and cap this lane out. We'll have a really big Punisher in this lane. We'll have a big, a big Atlantis lane with our, um, with our Iron Man. So I think we have a good shot at being competitive across the board. And so here we do have an inverted Angela, which I mean, if we threw it into negative zone is gonna just hurt us more. Actually, it hurts us in negative zone, but it benefits us in Atlantis. So we are gonna drop our Angela. If that two power swing is what makes the difference between us winning and losing Atlantis, I'm gonna lose it. Um, and so then we will drop Iron Man as the last card to be able to get that cheeky mystique combination off once again. And they do fill up the board. Okay, good. They drop their apocalypse over in negative zone. We we should have no problem beating their power level because of the two secret iron men that we're going to drop and flip on them here it's so hard to anticipate there's just no way um, especially because we inverted late we don't have it it's not out front in front of you it's not just blatantly obvious and so we blow it out of the park not even close here in the two lanes that we chose to compete for absolutely beautiful negative serotonin was already good but now you can add some deceptiveness to that play as well and you can add some sneaky style into it uh, just absolutely phenomenal all right and so speaking of fantastic we did have a few viewers that I wanted to shout out from our lunch live stream yesterday. There was so much positivity and so much support around our live stream yesterday. So first up, we had Todd English, who signed up for the YouTube membership as a mega supporter, which is our highest tier package that we offer. And so first off, I wanted to say thank you just for that alone. But in addition to that, he also gifted 20 memberships to the viewers of our channel from YouTube. And so thank you so much, Todd, for all of that support. That is phenomenal. It is so very generous of you. And I still, to this point, don't know exactly how to thoroughly thank you. It, it just, it means so much. So thank you so much. And so then in addition to that, we also had a member named Bayou Bean use the super chat feature from YouTube, which allows them to highlight a message. They pay a small amount. It goes towards helping support us as content creators, helping support bring higher level and higher quality content. So thank you, Bayou Bean. And then lastly, we have Blask Ocean, who used the tipping feature from our Twitch live stream, which allowed them to tip a small amount towards us to send a, a direct message as well. And so thank you, Blask Ocean, as well. Thank all of you so much for the support. It means so much that you are so impacted and you enjoy the content so much that you want to give back and, and say thanks. And I, I appreciate it so much. It's by no means 
required or necessary, but all of the feedback and all of the support is so very much appreciated. So thank you guys. And so giving a small update, now that we're done with our little spiel, we do have the Invisible Woman. We have Mystique hidden behind it. And then going into turn six, we're gonna be able to drop two cards here. So we can either drop a Punisher in this lane, as well as an Iron Man in this lane, which I think is probably the path that we wanna go with. That's going to give us a sneaky Iron Man here, actually, depending on what they drop. Can that push us up over 14 power? Because that's gonna be four, five. It's gonna push us to 10 power unless they drop an additional card. And so maybe instead of the Punisher there, we go with Wolfsbane and then we go with Iron Man here. And so that will push us up to two, four, five, six, seven. That pushes us up to 14. So if they drop multiple cards here, it may hurt us a little bit. But if they are going with just the Carnage, then it does help us. We're gonna lock that in. And then if they're not able to play anything into Death's Domain, then as long as we win one of these locations, by more than they do, then we'll come out with the win here. And so let's go ahead and lock that in. We have our Iron Man. Ooh, and so they have a Bucky Barn. So they do get six power over in Death's Domain. And so they do double Deadpool, which I don't think is gonna do it for them. Oh, yeah. We have the Iron Man. Yeah. We have the Mystiqued Iron Man coming in, which will push us for a tie if my, if my math was correct, which will push us for a tie in Atlantis, which will allow us to be ahead in mid by more than they're ahead in Death's Domain and allow us to bring in that win. So the Mystique Iron Man combo coming in again as a very clutch, very, very clutch play in that sneaky Iron Man ability copy, that sneaky power push. I thought this deck felt amazing already. And this little combo, this little tech, I think pushes it up over the edge. All right, so next up we have Angry Panda. That sounds kind of bot-like to me, right? Um, we will see, we will see. Um, and so we're gonna play it out anyways. If it turns out that they don't use any black and white variant cards, maybe, maybe we just leave it in. Um, but it just depends on what it looks like they play. So we do have our Mr. Negative in our starting hand. So we'll be able to do something pretty cool with that to invert our cards. Unfortunately, we already have Iron Man, but it's not a huge downside either. And so Muir Island is pretty nice for us dropping our cards. Ooh, we have Mystique already. We're gonna drop our Punisher just so that he can get stronger each turn. He's gonna be a good card to let to sit and forget in that lane. Plus they are gonna want to fill this lane up. They're typically gonna wanna cap out uh, Muir Island so that they can get the most upside from that buff. And then they get a massive Massive red skull which will give us plus two to all of the cards in this lane so if we end up doing an Iron Man in this lane that'll end up being a plus 16 push on our end and so they'll actually have a negative two out of the encounter but for now I think we are gonna go with the mr. negative into Muir Island while we sit and think about what else we are gonna do and actually we should have moved our, our vision over into Muir Island since he can move every turn, there's no downside to... Okay, now I guess it didn't matter. There's no downside to moving him over where he can buff up each turn. But since they changed it, it doesn't matter anymore. Um, and so they do use a Mr. Negative, which flips into magic and changes the limbo location. And so we do have an additional turn now, and we don't have to worry about dropping our magic. We get some pretty good, unique uh, play chances here. I think we're going to go with Sarah here, or do we... No, we're going to go with Sarah mid that's gonna allow us some flexibility in pushing power in limbo because the way that the lockjaw lane works, it's gonna be very sporadic. We don't know exactly what that's gonna end up being. And so I think it's gonna be better off for us if we, ooh, and so they're going with a, a Wong style or an on reveal Wong style deck build. And so they do pull into Psylocke here. So they have one additional energy this turn, but this is also almost capped out. Um, and so let's go with our Angela play here. We can go with our Rogue, which will steal their Wong's ability. They do have initiative, so they will turn first, unfortunately. We could even go with the double Wong just to kind of like really assert that dominance. And then we could go with a quadruple trigger Wolfsbane to finish it off. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's no double Iron Man for sure, but is it fun? Absolutely. But it only wins us this lane. We then have to worry about winning one of the other ones. And does an Iron Man mojo do that? Potentially. We're going to lock it in and we're just going to, we're just going to play it by ear. So they do use a Jubilee, which pulls in, which double pulls because of Wong. It's gonna cap out this location. So it's Iron Heart, which double triggers as well. And then they pull into, a white tiger which double triggers as well they have one slot left to play cards in so they put an iron man into x mansion we are going to avoid that lane like the plague um so now we just have to come up over their power level in these two lanes which doesn't sound great but it is possible so we now 
we now have the mystique the, the double wong we don't even run wong and we have the double wong here we can do a magic we could move our vision over which i don't think is the play so this is going to quadruple trigger so it's going to be 6 12 24 power in this middle lane absolutely nuts wolf spain absolutely nuts um and then we are going to get an additional six power in this lane so that puts us at 19 then we're going to double that i i don't think there's a card that they can play that will come up over that power level but i don't want to snap and scare them away i want the eight cubes trust me i do i don't know i think they would retreat i definitely think they would retreat so we are going to go ahead and just lock it in and let this play out. This is going to be huge. This play is nuts. Like this is just stealing their stuff. One, two, three, and the four trigger, which is absolutely ridiculous. Then we have the mojo, which we are going to double in power. So satisfying such a satisfying win oh my gosh the power level and the ability to push so much power with this deck is nuts um you can get some really high cube games uh just in the few that we've played we're almost up to back up to 82 and i think it would be no problem hitting infinite as of right now with this deck list next up we have banana cucho and in our starting hand we don't have anything we can play but that's okay we have our magic to extend the game we have iron man now we have sarah too uh, we have some pretty decent potential it'd be kind of nice if they had a killmonger to kill off all of these one cost cards that we don't that we don't necessarily want on the board but even if not that's okay we're going to start dropping resources into Muir island because that is going to be the lane we're going to benefit more from the longer our cards are there and so i almost want to drop wolfsbane as well which will give us another power push. Usually I like to hold Wolfsbane, but this time we're gonna do it. We're gonna send it. Um, that way we have an additional card here. Ooh, so it may be that they're running their own version of the negative serotonin. If we can snipe their Iron Man, if we can hide our Iron, our second Iron Man, that would be huge. Um, and so they go ahead and snap. They do have the Mr. Negative. We have Sarah to push out some decent power. We also have magic. If they don't extend the game, we're going to need to draw into some help here. Uh, we're going to need, we're going to need a decent push. The last card here, I would like to be an Iron Man. That is going to really accelerate our, Mir our Muir Island to give us some potential upside. And so they just drop a Bishop here. We know that they're kind of probably conserving some of their power. So I think we drop our Invisible Woman we go ahead and drop our Angela. Then I think we drop our Invisible Woman here. We already have a decent amount of power here, so being able to sneak a an Iron Man is going to be more impactful in Central Park than in Kunlun. And so we are going to extend the game by one. We are fingers crossed that we draw into our Mystique here. And maybe they play a Magic as well. We don't know for sure, but it's possible. If they've hit the Mr. Negative already, we just need Mystique to really hold this down and pay off. And so they use Angela. They use Magic to extend the game as well. Okay, so not not terrible for us. We could have dropped some more powerful resources anticipating that, but it's okay. And then we hit our Mr. Negative. That's unfortunate. Where do we think they're going to drop resources? I almost want to, of course, play our Iron Man here, which if they have the inverse Iron Man, I don't think we can compete for this one, unfortunately. But if they drop an Iron Man or a version of an Iron Man here, or even like a Mojo, we can steal that Mojo with our Rogue. I don't know. I don't know, Banana. You may not have the loss here. Um, we may be the one that that are losing. You have the inverse cards. You may be trying to, to bait and switch us. And so we have the Iron Man. Maybe they have the inverted Iron Man, which is huge for them. They have a Jubilee, which pulls into a Rogue. No way. Beautiful banana. That, that, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And then the, and then the Mojo in mid, that means their Mystique is over here. We steal their Mystique ability. Had they not gotten the Rogue play there, um, so the Jubilee tech out came in pretty handy for them, but it also came in pretty handy for us because we steal their mojo. Had we just been straight up and played our Iron Man here, we would have won both locations. It just came down to a Jubilee pool, and unfortunately we lost that coin flip, but it was so very close. It came down to their tech card versus ours, and then where we played the rest of our resources. So very good game. Banana, that was so incredibly close. So incredibly close. Next up we have Cyro Watts, and our, in our starting hand we have Angela and Bishop. We hit Shadowland, which doesn't feel great. They drop a Misty Knight, so probably playing a Patriot deck. And so we can always steal one of their Patriot's abilities with our Rogue, um, which they'll probably end up playing Patriot in this lane if they do. The Death's Domain is pretty tough um, for this deck archetype. So I think we're going to play our Angela 
into the Shadowland to push a decent amount of power. Ooh, so I stand corrected. They had a Mr. Sinister. They probably have a Brood as well. So they're going to be able to push quite a bit of power into Death's Domain. Um, and so I think we have to compete for left and right and just let them have mid. We're going to have to win the other two. But oftentimes it, it's not too difficult to steal away whichever lane they drop like a Patriot and a Mystique because that's a low power push. Um, where it becomes an issue is where they have all of their tokens. And so I think we drop our Bishop here. I don't think they play into the Gia. They do play into the Gia already. Okay, interesting. Um, and so they may drop a Mystique. They may follow this one up with a Mystique here. Hmm. Do we, do we play our Mr. Negative into Death's Domain? So the, my thinking is if we can draw into Magic next turn, we can change this location. But if we muddy the deck with three rocks, that is huge. That will be inverted rocks that gives us less chance to draw into our key resources. And do we really need four power? If we're going to win, we're going to win by a landslide. If we're going to lose, it's going to be by a landslide. I don't think we need the four power, Mr. Inter Mr. Negative. He will get his impact just by having his on reveal trigger. And so if we can draw into magic, it'd be beautiful. We don't. Okay. So now how do we want to play? So we can drop, we can drop Sarah here, which does muddy up the water. Because if we commit our resource here, that pretty much locks in this location. They know exactly what power level they have to get to. And so if they do two, four, six, eight more power with a mystique, even if we steal their Patriot, actually, maybe not. Maybe if we steal their Patriot, that puts them at 12, that puts us at 12 with Bishop and we'll be even higher. I think, I think it's okay to cap out this location this turn, um, just for the sake of trying to draw into our magic a little bit easier. And so then they do have the brood, which they end up dropping into Death's Domain here. So we are hoping for our magic to get one additional turn. If we don't, I mean, we have several other cards, but this will give us the... So we do get our magic. How magical. Okay, so it's not too difficult to overcome the power level in the Gia. So maybe we do our magic, we do Punisher, and we do, do we, do we do Wolfsbane here? We could always do Invisible Woman and then hide Wolfsbane behind it. Will that give us enough? Because um, I anticipate that they drop the Onslaught here actually. And then we can steal one of those two abilities. Um, so maybe we compete for these two instead of this one. It'll be kind of a surprise push, but I think it'll be okay. So in our deck, we still have Iron Man, we still have Mystique, and we have Mojo. None of which are going to be great for pushing and winning the Gia. What we're going to have to rely on is the fact that we are taking away their power here and here. And we're giving a pretty decent power push in return. Um, and so Invisible Woman is going to help us hide the... So they do have the Onslaught. So that pushes them really high, but they've they've given themselves quite a few rocks over the over the course of the game they've given themselves six additional rocks um and so we have to hope that that is enough for us to um steal away and win if they ooh, if they have mystique though that feels really bad and we really messed up at that point but we are going to let it roll out. We're going to let it play out. We're not going to snap because we're not that confident. We're confident, but not that confident. Oh no, they did get the mystique. Very well played, sir. <sighs> Very well played. Ooh, so we get the we get the patriot, which means that they don't get anything. I had given up. I had given up hope. Oh my gosh. No shot. <laughs> <laughs> Did we just hit that? <laughs> so to break it down a little bit, we hit the one out of three chance. So Rogue was going to steal one of their ongoing abilities. I thought they, they were going to copy Patriot initially with their Mystique, meaning that if we stole one, they would still have the other. But they used Mystique to copy Onslaught, and so they had two Onslaughts, but we ended up stealing their only other ongoing ability in Patriot. That means they had quadruple nothing. Um, instead of quadruple the Patriot buff. And so we end up taking it, which makes their power push and their power levels abysmal. Oh my gosh, I had I had given up. I had picked up my phone. I was I was moving <laughs> I was mentally moving on to the next one. Oh my gosh, uh, Cyro, you did not deserve that. All right, so learning time with TLSG is back again. So we did get lucky in this game. We got incredibly lucky, which is cool for the content, but we had a really easy play, a really easy path to win. So at this point in time, with the still shot that we have on the screen, they played a card to follow up their Patriot on that next turn. 
as soon as they played that card, we knew that they couldn't mystique their Patriot anymore. So we were safe to at that point drop our Rogue, and then therefore we would have guaranteed that they wouldn't be able to hit anything with their Mystique or their Onslaught, and we would have pretty much nullified their Power Push right then and there. But instead, we got really lucky with the 1 and 3 later on. But we didn't have to bring it down to the wire like that. We had a chance to win right here after this turn. And so thank you for taking the time to learn with me. Let's go back and finish off the video. All right, and so off of that insanely crazy lucky win of a game for that last one, we are gonna go ahead and end the video here. Overall, this deck list feels phenomenal. It's not gonna win every single game, but you have a lot of resources to counter a lot of decks, to outpower a lot of decks. There are gonna be some games where they get high rolls that you're just gonna have to retreat, but overall, the potential to do some late game swings to get four and eight cube victories is phenomenal. I would absolutely recommend this if you're trying to climb along with a few other decks, but this one feels phenomenal. And so as always, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave it a like and a comment down below. It helps the video get out to a wider audience. And so as always, I hope that you enjoyed the video. This has been TLSG. Later guys.